Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to explain to you how to place elements on a form, how to name those elements, and why we want to name them. So first thing I'm going to talk about is the name property. Alright, so whenever you place an element on a form, you should give that element a name. Now this isn't going to be apparent to you the first time you start creating a form. You might wonder, why do we do this? Why does it matter? Trust me, it does. Uh, so when you name elements, you want to use the same conventions you would for a variable. So something meaningful, no spaces, no strange characters, and this idea of a three character prefix. Now here's my commonly used elements and the prefixes I use. So buttons start with BTN, labels are LBL, text boxes are TXT, list boxes are LST. Text boxes and list boxes are the most important. When I talk about naming things, you're going to see me using the properties window, and I'm going to basically set the name and text properties down there. So without any further ado, let's jump into Visual Studio. So here's form. First thing I'm going to place on this form is a button. And so you can double click something here, or you can click and drag. There's all kinds of ways to set things on a form. Notice it's drag and drop. If I want to resize it, I can. I'm not saying there's really any reason to, but I can. Notice the text on that button. It says button one. Well, you'll see I have the properties window down here. Hopefully you do too. If you don't, I have a video called configuring the environment. And so if I want to change the displayed text, I need to change the text property. So instead of button one, I'm going to say push me. Right, really informative stuff. Now, that's the text property, but I also need to set the name property, which is really what this button, this video is all about. Notice the text was at the bottom, the name's at the top, and so I'm going to call it BTN, and then I can kind of call it whatever. I'll call it push, right, because it says push me, I guess. So there we go. I set the text, and I set the uh, name property. The next thing I'm going to place is a text box. So here's a text box. So I'm going to set the name of that text box to TXT F name. All right, so I guess the user's going to enter his first name there. And let's do another text box right there. And this one I'm going to name TXT uh, L name. All right, so here's where things are getting a little weird. Imagine if a user tries to run this program, what are they supposed to do? Just know that that's the first name and the last name? How do I know that's not your favorite color and your favorite soda? Really, you know, I don't know. And so we're going to address that. There's a couple ways we could, but I'm going to address it with labels. And common controls, here's a label. Place a label up here. And so that label, I'll give it the name of LBL first. Notice that didn't really change much. I want to change what is displayed on the form. And if I want to change what's displayed on the form, then I need to address the text property. So I'll say first name. So notice, right, a text box is kind of meaningless if it doesn't have a corresponding label. So that's one common thing to do, just kind of explaining to a user, right, you know what to do with this form because you just created it. But when a user runs this form, they need to know what to do too. So that's what you might do there. Let's put another label here and we'll call it, so I'll set the text property, last name. How about give the label a name as well? We'll call this uh, LBL last, right? This might seem kind of tedious, but I'm telling you this is time well spent in the design process. So create a usable form. Name your stuff. So I've got two text boxes. Let's also place a list box. I'll place it right here. There's some resizing on the fly. A uh, list box is a lot like a text box, but it allows the user to have multiple rows of output. So more useful in the long run. Also notice it says list box one inside of it, which is kind of weird. That is actually the name. So I don't know what this list box is. We'll say list uh, colors. Maybe it's a list of my favorite colors. I don't know what it is. Notice how that changed that. So you might be thinking, oh, we, I guess we don't need a label for this one. Well, let's run this program and see what it looks like. All right, so Joe User at this point is running your program. Oh, that's always fun. This is what I get for reusing my code. Right, that should work. Good. All right, so right, if, if I just gave this form to someone, they'd go, okay, I guess my first name goes there, last name goes there. Wait, what happened to that text right there? And that's one of the strange things about a list box a bit, is that is the name, um, but it doesn't show up when you run the form. So I guess I need a label above it. And if I want to change the contents of the label, right, so I'm going to change the text property, and I'll say favorite colors, I guess. 
Notice that I didn't name the label. In reality, you probably don't need to name your labels. You should, right? Just just because you should, but uh, you don't have to usually. All right, so notice I've got these elements on my form. Each one of them has a meaningful name, and I've got labels giving meaning to the text boxes. All right, I know I just used the word meaning more times than I should have in a sentence, but I think it makes sense. Let me show you why this is useful. I'm going to try. All right, so let's say I want to write some code. In other words, I want to double click on this button, give it some meaning. Let's say dim name as string equals, right? I'm writing some code. Oh, that didn't go like I wanted. I don't know how I got auto completed there particularly. Um, so let's say I don't remember what my text boxes are called because that's the thing. You're going to switch over to this code view and you're going to forget what your text boxes are called. But if I'm consistent in my naming, you see I've got a list of all the text boxes, right? Because I go txt every time I name a text box. So this time I go, oh, I guess I wanted the first name. And you could imagine, of course, this doesn't work. I know that. I'll, I could fix it if I wanted to. Um, I just really wanted to show you how I used IntelliSense to get a list, so to speak, of all the text boxes on my form. Because in reality, when you create a full-blown form, you might have 10 text boxes, right? First name, last name, address, city, state, zip. And if you, well, I'll just say this, there's no way that you're going to remember what you named all your text boxes. However, if you start them all with TXT, then you can at least kind of browse through that IntelliSense-generated list to figure out what's on your form. Yeah, I would feel better if uh, I didn't have any syntax errors, but I don't even want to deal with it. Um, this is really not what this video is about. It's about placing elements on a form, naming elements on a form, and uh, those common conventions, such as, let me jump back through to this right here. So really the idea of as soon as you place things on a form, you should be going straight to naming them. Uh, it's going to save you in the long run, um, so hopefully this video helps a little bit. I'm going to make some more videos pretty soon, so keep checking back. Thanks for watching.